somebody in. Come on. Say good evening to the pastor. See, come on. Sit up the thumbs. Tag everyone you know. All thousand of your friends. Put it on those big groupies. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Sit them up. Sit them up. God bless you. Bishop. Come on. Sit them up. Sit them up. Come 
to experience the prophetic tonight, y'all. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. King is here. Says the king is here. Yes, the king is here. Two more minutes, two more minutes, two more minutes. I need y'all to share it. I need you to wake tag up, people wake in here. Up. Come on. Wake up, wake up. The king is here. Wake up. Wake That's a blessing in being obedient. That's what we're going to learn tonight, y'all. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. right now and after you share it just simply type in i shared it i'm gonna give you a minute and 15 seconds y'all and we going in y'all oh yeah we going all the way in Good afternoon. I don't take it for granted when people take out time in their busy schedule just to hear. 
what Pastor T has to say. And for that, I say thank you. And for that, I'm appreciative. Man, I'm excited about what God is getting ready to do on tonight. You're not watching this live because you were invited, because someone tagged you in here. You're watching this live because God has summoned you. And when God has summoned you, that means you have no other choice but to yield. And I'm telling you all tonight, whatever you do, whatever you do, don't log off prematurely. Because it could be that time when you get ready to log off and say, man, I've been on here too long. It could be the time when God allow one word to cause a breaking. So I tell you to buckle up. Those of y'all that want this word, just type in, I want what God has for me tonight. Come on. Those of y'all that I'm talking to, just type in, I want what God has for me tonight. Come on. Come on. Just type in, I want what God has for me tonight. Tonight, we're going somewhere tonight, y'all. Come on. I just need to, I need to see who I'm talking to tonight. Those of y'all that, that, that's here for a word, a word tonight, for a move, just type in, I want what God has for me tonight. Come on. Let's go there, y'all. Let's go there. Just type in, I want what God has for me. And I'm telling you, whatever you do, you can't log off tonight. You cannot log off tonight. Don't say where it's going. I'm, I'm giving them 30 minutes. I'm giving them 15 minutes. You're going to miss it. Because I believe that something's about to unlock tonight. I believe it's about to happen. So with that being said, let me go ahead and get started. As you all know, our nation is in trouble. We are in major trouble. So on last night, as I was driving home, I clearly heard God say, Terrence, this has to be the year in which you and those that want a supernatural shift must give me their all. He says, this has to be the year of being completely sold out to me. And this is the problem that I think many of us have right now. And that is when God has summons us to be completely sold out to him, that is going to require us of being perfected. No, Jesus knows that the only, only perfect person who walked on his face called earth was Jesus. So he's not expecting us to be perfect, but what he's requiring from us is to go deeper. I need to see the people that I'm, I'm talking to right now. Just type in God, I want to go deeper. Come on, come on. About 17 people that I'm talking to right now, just type in God, I want to go deeper. Come on, come on. I need to see who I'm talking to tonight. We're going there tonight, y'all. We're going there tonight. Just type in God, I want to go deeper tonight. So look at this now as you're typing. I must continue. I ain't got all day, y'all. So this morning, while I was laying in bed, a heavy spirit hit me and I began to weep like a baby. So I went downstairs to finish my weeping. <laughs> and I was weeping, God began to minister to me. And one of the things that God ministered to me was, he says, I'm taking you, Terrence. This is what God said. He says, you looked at others, either up close or from afar, and you either admired them or tried to pattern after them because you saw what was on them. But the tripped out part about that was, look at this now. He said, I was showing you how you are to be in demand for more. He says, everything God demands, hello, Ladon, is an example of what he wants us to do on the earth. So that the people not of the faith can see the power and the force. So God began to speak to me. He said, Terrence, let me tell you something in this season, in this hour. I'm getting ready to cause you to have an epiphany. To let you know that your life is really not your own. He said, you made a covenant. You made a vow to me. And he says, I'm getting ready to hold you to that vow to a whole other realm. And so, and so this is what's been going on. Many of our leaders, they had a form, but they lacked the formula. Let me say that again. They had a form, but they lacked the formula. So in other words, many of them, they knew how to dress it up. They knew how to emotional it up. They knew how to preach it up. They knew how to teach it up. But a few of them knew how to live it up. <laughs> Let me say that again. A lot of them, they knew how to dress it up. They knew how to emotional it up. 
They knew how to preach it up. They knew how to teach it up. But a few of them knew how to live it up. Says God, the days of playing, he said, it is officially over. He said, this shall be the season in which the real shall rise and the fake is about to fall. Come on, I need y'all to hear what I'm getting ready to convey. When God gave me this word, it hit me real hard, y'all. And I'm saying, God, this is what you want me to, con to convey to your people in a time of a pandemic? He said, this is exactly what I want you to say. Don't add to it. Don't take away. Do what I tell you to do. And I will cause you to prosper because of the spirit of obedience. So God said, Terrence, you can no longer call my name and not live by my requirements. And this is one of the reasons why for this quarantine, and it was to call my people to a place called repentance. And in the beginning, look at this now, in the beginning, in the month of March, in the, in the month of March of last year, in the beginning, many of us got it. And most of us, it was derived from the spirit of fear, which caused us to go after God even the more. But as time went on, they became relaxed and returned back to their regular schedule program and for many of them this was why you saw a surge in death especially in the body of Christ and this wasn't to say that those that died was a result of their sins or because they experienced the wrath of God no I am not saying that but what I am saying is that the death in the body of Christ was a byproduct today is January the 6th God says before it gets better it's going to get worse he said this is the hour in which God says, I'm separating the wheat from the tear. Again, in most cases, death isn't the confirmation that those that died or that is dying are the ones God is or was separating because we have to remember that we serve a sovereign God, which means that God can do whatever he wants when he wants to and with whoever he wants to do it to. So that's not the case. But God spoke to me and said, Terrence, you haven't even scratched the surface of being in my presence. <laughs> he said, Terrence, look at this now. He said, Terrence, <laughs> you have to know that there, that where you are, you can no longer curtail the messages of what I want to say. He said, the days of you worried about the opinions of men lets me know that you don't, you, you're not quite there. He said, because when I tell you to say something, you want to sugarcoat it. He said, the days of sugarcoating the truth has come to an end. Because if he said, he said, Terrence, if you fully had it, you will say what I say and say it and don't pat and don't back paddle after you said it. And this is the problem that we run into into the church. We have many backpedaling going on in the body of Christ, which means we say what God is saying when we under the anointing, but with the but in that spit second when we come out of his presence, we start caring about the opinions of men, which then causes us to put roses on fire that God released in our bellies. He said, Terrence, that has that has been your problem. You wanted to be Mr. Suitable. You want to be Mr. Famous. You want to be Mr. Popular, Mr. Popular. You want to be Mr. Congeniality. But in this season, this is what God said to me. He said, but in this season, being popular will not cut the mustard. You have to say what I say and let the chips fall where they may. And this is the problem. This is the part of going deeper. Because when you go deeper in God, it's going to get lonely. Come on. I'm getting ready to show you that we, to let you know that you're on the right path. That when you made up in your mind that you want to go deeper, that you want more of God, it's going to get lonely. When you're going deeper in God, it's going to require you to cut people that you love the most. When you're going deeper in God, it's going to require you to let go of some unequally yoked relationships. When you're going deeper in God, it's going to require you to make some tough decisions that will not be popular with man, but be approved by God. <laughs> Let me say that again. I don't know if y'all heard what I just said. Let me slow down and say that one more time. When you're going deeper in God, it's going to require you to make some tough decisions that will, that will not be popular with man, but approved by God. When you're going deeper in God, it's going to require you to give up the very thing that is dear to you. <laughs> when you're going deeper in God, you have to be okay with the backlash that is going to come after you made that decision. When you're going deeper in God, you have to be okay with some people that know you to now turn on you. <laughs> Let me say that again. When you're going deeper in God, you might as well make up in your mind 
that it's going to be okay in the end because I understand that some people that don't want to hear the truth, they don't want to be candid, they're going to be the very ones that's going to, that's, that's going to, that's going to screw venom. And that's the part that many of us don't like because many of us feel we're already in a pandemic. And the last thing we need is to be alone or to be lonely. And what you don't realize, let me tell you what you don't realize. What you don't realize, and that is, when, when you remove the fat out of your life, <laughs> when you remove the fat out of your life, then God says, now you're giving me something to work with. All right, let me take my time. I just need about 18 people. Just type in God. I'm ready to go deeper. Come on. 18 people, please hurry up. We ain't got all day. Just type in God. I'm ready to go deeper. Come on. The 18 people that I'm talking to, just type in God. I'm ready to go deeper. Come on, the 18 people, just type in God. I'm ready to go deeper. Come on, hurry up, y'all. I got, I got a little, I got a few moments today. Come on, just type in God. I'm ready to go deeper. Come on, come on, just type in God. I'm ready to go deeper. And see, what you don't realize, and that is, when God begins to remove the fat out of your life, now God strengthens everything that is attached to you. But the reason why God can't strengthen every weak area in your life, and that's because you have too much carnality attached to you. See, many of us, we want to go deeper in God with conditions. But let me bless you with this. When you decide to go deeper in God, sometimes even your spouse isn't going to understand it. Can I say that again? Sometimes when you get ready to go deeper in God, sometimes your spouse won't understand it. Your children won't understand it. Your BFF won't understand it. Your friends won't understand it. Your family members won't understand it. People around you are going to start calling you crazy. They're going to start saying, man, you're too deep. But man, if you understood the level of my warfare, if you understood all the hell that I've been through just to get here, you will be encouraging me, man, to go deeper. Because for many of y'all, you saw the hell that I went through. You saw the backlash that I went through. You saw the betrayal that I went through. It's just a it's just, a, it's just a wonder that I got a right mind. And now that I kept my mind stayed on God, you mean to tell me you going, you're not going to encourage me to go deeper? I need about five people just to tell me it's time to go deeper. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, five people. Come on, just type in. It's time to go deeper. Come on, y'all, hurry up. We ain't got all day. Come on, y'all, come on. Just type in. It's time to go deeper. When you're going deeper, that means people that is closest to you, they're not going to even understand your walk. What did Jesus say when, when the disciples tried to interrupt him when he was teaching? I'm getting ready to show you. Let me prove my point. He told his disciples, and I'm going to paraphrase it. He says, don't you ever interrupt me for what I'm doing just to say that my mother and my brothers are outside. This is what Jesus said about that interruption. He said, because if they were truly under, if they truly understood my assignment, they would have, they wouldn't be on the outside looking in. And that's found in Matthew chapter number 12, verse number 24. And this is what we have to understand. I want to bless y'all with this. This is what you have to understand. And that is, Jesus wasn't denying his earthly responsibility or disrespecting his mother. But Jesus understood that kingdom work isn't personal. I need about 15 people just to type in it ain't personal. Excuse my English. I know I got some English majors on here. But we, we're just going to be just a little hood just for a few moments. Just type in it ain't personal. Come on. Come on. I need about 15 people. Please just type in it ain't personal. Come on. Hurry up, y'all. We ain't got all day. That's Matthew 12, verse number 48. Just type in it ain't personal. Come on, come on, it ain't personal. Come on, just type it, it ain't personal. It ain't personal because if you take it personal, it's going to become personal. If you're worried about people's feelings, then you won't get to your next. And that's the reason why for many of y'all, you are behind your time because you took that thing personal. You said, well, I don't want to hurt their feelings. You kept saying, well, I want to keep working with them. Man, if you've been working with them for the last seven, eight, nine, 
10 years and they still haven't matured, chances are they don't want the same God that you want. They don't want the same fire you want. They want it with conditions. Come on, just type it. It ain't personal. Come on, it ain't personal. It ain't personal. So, 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 so. And this is the problem that many of us are running into. And that is because God had to check me on last night. He said, Terrence, you saying what I'm saying, but you sugarcoating it after you release what I told you because you're worried about people's feelings. He says, lay it on them. Don't worry about what I've told you. Don't, he said, because of their mind. He said they're going to feel a confirmation in their spirit anyway. And this is the problem that many of us are running into. And that is we want to be well liked amongst family members. We want to be well liked amongst friends. We want to be well liked amongst our peers. We don't want people to say that you think you're holier than thou. So what do you do when they start speaking that language? Because you don't want to come across as being lame. You still do the same thing just to be, just so that you can be well liked. But God is saying, when you're going deeper in me, come on, let me bless about 18 people. He says, when you're going deeper in me, the surface cannot be attached to you. Oh, my. oh God, I feel your presence, God. He said, the surface can no longer be attached to you. When you're going deeper in me, shallowness cannot be named among you. When you're going deep in me, once a week prayer isn't going to work. When you're going deep in me, reading your word socially isn't going to work. When you're going deep in me, putting me on a timetable won't work. When you're going deep in me, you have to be intentional with me. Somebody just type in God. I want to go deeper. Come on. Come on. 18 people. I'm talking to 18 people. The rest of y'all, y'all just eavesdropping. 18 people, please just type in God. I want to go deeper. Come on, y'all. Come on. 18 people. Hurry up. We ain't got all day. Just type in God. I want to go deeper. Come on. Come on. Hurry up, y'all. Hurry up. Hurry up. God, we want to go deeper. The mundane won't work. The mundane won't work. The mundane won't work. It won't work. It won't work. It won't work. It won't work. When you, will go, when you want to go deeper in God, you have to get to a place where you say, oh, I'm going to lose myself. What did the word of God say in Matthew chapter number 16, verse number 25? This is what Matthew 16, verse number 25, it says this. This is what it says. For whoever desires to save his or her life shall lose it. But whosoever loses his or her life for my sake will find it. And this is the reason why for many of you all, oh, let me bless you with, this is the reason why for many of you all, you're going around the mulberry bush because you ain't trying to come all the way in. You just want just enough just to skate, to skate by. You want just enough to say, man, I read my Bible. You want to just check in, make an attendance and say, God, I pray for five or ten minutes. God, I read my word for five or ten minutes. But God says, what do you think that I am? You think that I'm a genie? That you think that you can rub me and think that I'm okay with the little things that you give me? He said, you're not even giving me a tithe of your time. You want to give me two hours and 40 minutes out of a day and you think that I'm okay with, I should be okay with you just giving me five minutes of prayer, five minutes of reading your word. All right, all right. So this is what he said. He said, whoever decides to save his life, he said, you're going to lose it. But whosoever loses it for my sake, he says, you're going to find it. And this is where many of you all are right now. You're lost because you're trying to hold on to things and people that God told you to release. I don't care if it's your mama. They're not going to understand the season that you're in. Especially in this season of you trying to go deeper. Because they're not going to understand it because they're going to think you're crazy. They're going to say, man... Don't get all deep on me. You know, we used to drink together. Now, all of a sudden, you don't want to drink. No, no, no I'm, I'm not convicting you of drinking. I'm not convicting you. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not shaming you for drinking. I just know that where I am, I can't do it. I just know that where I am, I can't do it. Because your assignment and my assignment are two different assignments. And because I understand that I have an apostolic assignment, there are some things that I can't do. There are some places I can't go. It ain't that I'm lame. It says that God got me in a place called hostage. Ay, 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 ay. It's, God got me in a place called standstill. God got me in a place called isolation. And, and, and it's not, I want to do it. I want to be popular. I 
want to like you. I want to go to your bar mitzvahs, your bat mitzvahs. I want to go to your backyard party. But where I am right now, it's going to cost me. And for many of you all, you've been where you are for 10 years. You've been around this mulberry bush. You keep kicking rocks. And God says, win. All right. All right. All right. All right. Y'all ain't ready for this. Y'all ain't ready for this. You ain't ready for this. Just type in God, I want to go deeper. Come on, just type in God, I want to go deeper. And this is where the reason why things aren't aligning up in your life because you're afraid to hurt people's feelings. When God is telling you to say what I say. And this is the reason why things are not adding up in your life because you have too many subtractions going on. <laughs> Let me say that again. This is the reason why things aren't adding up in your life because you got too many subtractions going on in the spirit realm. What are some of the attractions that are going on in your life? No real prayer life. No real study time with God. No altar building time with God. There's no fasting going on. There's no meditation going on. You don't live a consecrated life. You still hanging around carnal minded people. You still trying to make the word of God fit you and your situation. And when you're sold out for God, come on, let me bless about 18 people. When you're sold out for God, it doesn't matter who you have to give up as long as you're willing to please God. Come on, come on, come on. My, my assignment this season is to please God. Come on. And to know, <laughs> Pastor Brenda, to know for many of us, last year was one of the most difficult years in memory. And, and one we would all like to put behind us. But scripture is real clear in Psalms 34. It says David warns that the righteous person may have many troubles. That's in round about in verse number 19. But God said, Terrence, I know we experienced many troubles this past year despite doing God's holy word. But we also received the blessed assurance that the Lord will rescue his servants. That's in verse number 4, Psalms 34, 34. And again, although we may not like to forget the trouble we're facing, but let me make this prophetic announcement for about 18 people right here. Can I make this prophetic announcement right here? And that is, each trial and tribulation was an opportunity to look to God as your rescuer. Let me say that again. The trials and tribulations that you and I went through in 2020 and that are currently going through right now. Do you not know it is an opportunity to look to God as your rescuer? When you look back on 2020, we will always remember that while we worry that the pandemic would throw God's work, he remained faithful. Not only did God answer our prayers in the midst of a pandemic, he did more than we could ever imagine. And he reminded us that when his servants faces hardships, come on, the Lord says, I'm going to deliver you out of all of your trouble. And he said, this is the problem that's going on in the body of Christ. We are blown away by God's work, but we don't want to do God's work. I'm going to say that again. We're blown away by God's work, but we don't want to do God's work. So, yes, I know 2020 was devastating, but you made it out. And if you're going to survive in 2021, come on, I need to release this. He said it's mandatory that you walk closer with God. And before we, before I dive into the life of Elijah and Elijah, I want to talk about Elijah, the spiritual father, for a moment. Can I talk about Elijah? Let me just exegete who he is real quick. Before the transfer of the mantle to Elijah, his son, Elijah had to be had to be pro, had to be proved before God before he can finish his assignment. And this is the problem that many of us are running into and that is we're trying to quit even before we get started. When you're given an apostolic assignment and because it's out of your comfort zone or your elements, you want to bail out. Let me make this prophetic announcement to about five of you all right now that don't like the season that you're in and you feel like you're in a place called uncomfortable. Because of the assignment that's on your life. Come on, I need y'all to hear what I'm getting ready to convey. Because of the assignment that's on your life, 
you might as well submit because if you don't submit, your life is going to be total hell or total chaos. And if I were you, I would submit, do what God has commissioned for me to do so I can start experiencing the rest of the Lord. And this is why for many of you all, you are in a place called warfare because you're in a place called rebellion. So in other words, your personal pandemic is because of your own rebellion. And now you want to blame the devil. You want to blame your haters. You want to blame everyone except for looking in the mirror for where you are right now. <laughs> your rebellion got you in the position that you're currently in. Your stubbornness got you in the position that you're currently in. Your rejection got you in the position that you're currently in. So here it is. Come on, y'all. Let me bless y'all real good. So here it is. You have Elijah who was sent by God to destroy the system of witchcraft that was led by this witch by the name of Jezebel. And because of the wickedness that was in the land, Yahweh, which is God, raised up one of his most powerful prophets by the name of Elijah. Seemingly out of nowhere, Elijah was raised up. But what people don't talk about, and that is, before Elijah appeared on the scene, he fought with God with a lot of excuses. And that's just like many of us right now. We want God to give us, we want to give God all the excuses as to why we don't want to walk in our calling. We keep saying, I'm not qualified. We keep saying, I didn't go to seminary school. We keep saying, I'm shy. Saying, I can't speak like this person or that person. And what you don't realize is this. The reason why God is about to raise you up. Come on, come on, come on. Let me say that again. The reason why God is about to raise you up because of your uniqueness. And until you surrender, you're going to always live a life with limitations. So here it is. You have God who shuts down the heaven. And even during the shutting of heaven, God still protects Elijah, right? Not only did God protect him, but God made sure in the midst of his pandemic, God fed him. <laughs> so here it is, you have this witch by the name of Jezebel, who's now enraged because of the drought Elijah prophesied. Jezebel ordered the murder of the prophets of God. But what she didn't understand fully, come on, and this is what the devil didn't understand, and what she didn't understand fully, and that was Elijah was sanctioned, commissioned, and ordained and sent by God. Let me say this. When you've been sanctioned, commissioned, ordained, and even sent by God, I don't care how many demons, I don't care how many ops are against you, God will personally see to it that the mission he sent you on will come to pass. And this is the problem that many of y'all are running into right now. Let me bless y'all right around here. You're running into this problem. That is the reason why the enemy has access to your stuff. <laughs> the reason why the enemy has access to your stuff, which is your peace of mind, your joy, your finances, your children, your family, everything that's attached to you, the enemy now has access to you because, let me bless you with this one word, and that's because you're walking in a place called disobedience. Let me show you something about the spirit of obedience. When you walk in obedience, the spirit of obedience keeps you protected. The spirit of obedience keeps you sealed. So in other words, because you're walking fully with God, the enemy can see you. He can even he can share the same, same area as you. But because the shield of the Lord that's around you, he can't touch you because God says, I got you in a bubble. God says I got you in a bubble And because the assignment Is so great Come on let me bless about five great people That I'm talking to right now You think you average You ain't average boo boo You ain't average poppy Because the assignment Is so great On your life God is saying This is why I have to accelerate time Because time is of the essence 
and this training isn't negotiable. Let me bless about 10 of you all that feel like you in the wilderness. You feel like you're in a place called Ziglag. You feel like you're in a valley. You feel like you're at your, your lowest of low. God said, your alone time, <laughs> your alone time with me in the wilderness, your alone time with me in Ziglag, your alone time with me in the valley is more precious than a thousand Mount Carmel's, for it is there. What is there? Your valley. Your pace of zigzag, your pace of being crucial. It is there that we learn to follow the shepherd's voice. And it is there where God says, I'm molding you into an obedient and a trusted servant without which we are little more than presumptuous fools. And just like he did for Elijah, come on y'all, I need to walk around in here y'all because I feel something creeping up on me. And just like he did for Elijah, he says, I'm doing for many of you all right now, says God. He says, I'm training your voice to hear me and a stranger you won't follow. He says, I'm training you to trust me to supply all of your needs. I'm training you how to execute in the spirit realm. He says, I'm training you how to execute judgment against demons. I'm training you how to go in and go out, execute and stay out. He says, I'm trying to train you, but you don't want this training. You want to stay in ground level zero, but God says, I'm trying to teach you how to execute. He says, I'm trying to, I'm trying to train you how to represent me even when you're surrounded around your enemies. And God says, I'm even training those, those of you all that have questionable and even shaky backgrounds. Come on, let me talk to those of y'all that, that, that got shaky backgrounds. Come on, let me talk to y'all real quick. I want to talk to those of y'all that got shaky backgrounds. Let me talk to y'all real quick. Let me talk to those of y'all you got shaky backgrounds. You feel like you can't, you, you're not qualified. You feel like you did a whole lot of damnable things that God can't use you because of your background. Can I tell you something? You in great company. You got Abraham who had a baby out of wedlock. He was a he was a he was a liar. You have Noah who was a drunkard. You have David who was a murderer and an adulterer. You have Saul who now who turned into Paul, who was a murderer who hated the church. You have a whole lot of people. You have Jonah who was rebellious, who said, I don't want to do this because I don't want to deal with certain Negroes. But just the mere fact that you got a shaky background and you telling God I surrender means that you're qualified for this assignment that God has placed on your shoulder. God says, I have placed a burden on your shoulder. God says, I placed a burden on your shoulder. God says, I placed this apostolic burden on your shoulder. So if you wanted to quit now, it may cost you your life. <laughs> and God said, because it's you, is the reason why God says, I've chosen you. Because you're coming to this place called surrenderance. All right? And that's why your fight. How many of y'all been in a fight? You've been in a real fight. Especially, you've been in a fight with family members. You've been in a fight with people trying to trying to assassinate your character. You've been in a fight of, of just really surrender because you kind of in betwixt, you kind of torn of, of, of doing God's work and not wanting to be all the way in. And, and, so, and but let me just tell you, let me just help you. And that's the reason why your fight has been lengthy because you're afraid of what man knows about you and even what they may use against you. But I says God, let me release this prophetic word. But I says God, like I said in my word, it will be better. Come on, let me let me give you some word of encouragement for those of y'all you feel the tugging of the Lord, but you are afraid to come forth because of, 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 of shakiness. He says, this is what God told me to tell about seven people right around here. He said, it will be better for the people that got their mouth on you to place a millstone around their neck than to mess with my chosen one. And the reason why God is about to raise many of you all, many of you misfits up even right now, 
because our nation is at a place called Topsy Turvy. The reason why God is about to raise you up, even though you are jacked up, because your voice is, is what people can relate to. The people who are in ruins, come on, let me bless about 18 of you all. The people who are in ruins can't relate to those that live the life with a silver spoon in their mouth. But God says, I have to get you to the city. God says, I got to get you to the city because it's in the city. It's where the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, the lust of the eye. He says, I must get you to the city just like I did Elijah. Out of man. So therefore, he takes the man out of the city into the wilderness experience. What did Revelation chapter number 3 verse number 19 say? As many as I love, I rebuke and I chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Now you know that God called you, right? You know that you should be going a little deeper, right? You know that where you are is not where God intended for you to be. You know that, right? And that's the reason why all hell is breaking loose. You know that, right? That's the reason why every time you get some money in your hand and go through your hand like saying, that's the reason why when you feel like you're in a place called peace, it seems like all hell breaks loose. You, you, have you experienced that? Can I tell you right now? Let me give you some instruction. God said, tell about eight people right now because you know you have not been doing all that you know that God called you to do. I need you to type this one word in the comment section right now. Just type this one word. All right, it ain't for you. It's for your neighbor. Type it for your neighbor. Type this one word, repent. Come on, just type this one word, repent. Come on, just type this one word, repent. Come on, hurry up, y'all. We ain't got all day. Hurry up. Type that one word, repent. You making life so hard. You keep saying to yourself, man, when is things going to get better? Let me make this prophetic announcement. It ain't going to get better. Excuse me. I know I know. I got some English majors on here. But let me tell you, it ain't going to get better. Until you totally surrender to God. I'm not talking about on your terms. You can't do things on your terms. It has to be all of God or all of nothing. God says, I don't want half of you. I don't want three-fourths of you. God says, I want all of you. I don't care if your family members are not going to understand. I don't care if your spouse not going to understand. I don't care if your children not going to understand. I don't care if your boss not going to understand. But God says, I want all of you in this season. All right. I, I, and I, I hear some of y'all, well, it's a process. Yes, I understand the process. God going to take you to the process. But God says, I need it to be audibly out of your mouth. And before the mantle was passed on to Elijah the son, Elijah the father had to be tried. Elijah was rugged, was a rugged individual who stood alone and did and did not voice public opinion. His fiery zeal was not popular in his day, nor well received by the kings of people. And this is what God is saying: If you're going to be used by God. You have to not only have tough skin, but you have to be okay with people scandalizing your name. And this is what many of you all don't realize. And that is, when you're living holy for God, and you still have ops, God is saying, it's a matter of time before I deal with those that got their mouth on you. He says, so be not weary in well-doing. You're going to reap if you faint not. And this is what you don't realize. But you have to make sure that you're in a position of righteousness. You have to make sure you're in a position of holiness. You have to make sure you're in a position of purity in order for God to deal with those that have put their mouth on you. But if you're living like a dog, God says, I can't protect you. I can't fight for you. Because you're filthy in my presence. And because Elijah finally accepted the call of God and walked therein, he exposed the infections of Baal worship in the land of Israel for what it was, a festering sore 
that will bring death and destruction to God's chosen people. Let me say this. Because you're God's chosen people, I want to bless about eight of you all right now that's living in a place called fear. Because you're God's chosen people or chosen person, God has to protect you. And because Elijah was submitted to God, committed to the apostolic assignment that was given to him by God, he was able to do what an entire nation couldn't do. Like John, Elijah was a forerunner and he understood it. If I'm going to experience what God promised me, I understand I have to be sold out to God. And this is what God is saying to about eight of you all right here. He says, I've called many of you all to leave a legacy for your sons and your daughters. But because many of y'all have the world system still yet attached to you, many of y'all are leaving this place called earth an embarrassment. But I says, God, the spirit of submission, obedience is what I'm calling for you in this hour, says God. And just like I did with Elijah, when he was able to call down fire and rain, so shall I use many of y'all in this season and in this hour once you're fully committed and submitted. He says, God, Stop making life hard because of your own ideology. Says the Spirit of the living God, there's a confrontation that's going on in the heavenlies about many of you all. Let me say that again. There's a confrontation that's going on in the heavenlies about many of you all. And in this showdown, many of y'all have made a decision. And in his decision making, you want to see what's ahead of you. And for many of y'all, you will not. And those that will not foresee it, will not see it, will be, will be because God is teaching you to have to follow him even when you can't see him. What is that called when God telling you to follow me even when you can't see me? That's called blind faith. Blind faith calls you to trust God even when you can't trace him. Blind faith calls you to trust God and his assigned leaders for your life. And this is what many of y'all need to tap in right here. And before I dive into this, Elijah, Elijah, I want to go to Moses. I just need about eight people just to type in God. I want more of you. Come on. Come on. Eight people just type in God. I want more of you. Come on. Eight people just type in God. I want more of you. Come on. Come on. Just type in God. I want more of you. Come on, just type in God, I want more of you. Come on, hurry up, y'all. We ain't got all day. Oh, my. Come on, just type in. I need to say, hey, people, just type in God, I want more of you. Oh, my. God, we want more of you. Come on, just type in God, we want more of you. Do me one favor. We're at halftime, y'all. Y'all know what time it is. We're at halftime. I know you may have shared it once, but I need you to share it again. Come on. Come on. Somebody just logged on your page being nosy. We're about to give them something to watch right now. I'm telling y'all, don't log off. Whatever you do, don't log off. You're going to miss this next half of this message. Don't log off. So right now, after you share it, just simply type in, I shared it. Come on. After you share it, just simply type in, I shared it. Come on. I'm going to give you 90 seconds. Come on. Come on.
before we go to Elijah, Elijah, look at this. I want to show you something. I want to go to this. I want to go to Moses real quick. We all know we can agree that 2020 has been a very trying year. In most cases, everyone was or is or was affected by the same or dealing with the same thing in some shape, form, or fashion. So again, while I'm in prayer, in my time with God, I had to increase my time. And during that time, I began to weep like never before. As I mentioned to you all earlier last year, last year, God showed me the tragedies that we're facing was going to happen. On March 11th of last year, we were in Bible class, y'all, of last year. In our Bible class, the Lord gave me specific details on what's about to happen. What came late May or early June of last year, right? I'm under this persuasion. God will not allow us as believers to be caught by surprise. Even what's going on right now, I even prophesied what's about to hit America. That is about to look like World War III around this camp. The Lord showed me on March 11th of last year that our nation was going to look similar to the movie Purge. The Lord showed me on March 11th. Y'all remember, the, and I got people that recorded in Bible class in March 11th of last year that we were about to face one of the most trying times in America history. He showed me that we're going to be challenged financially, spiritually, emotionally and even physically come on whatever you do don't log off y'all gonna miss this move right here because i'm getting ready to give you more instructions on what's about to take place and how to handle it look at this now so last friday i went to god in a strong way because of our relationship so i begin to ask god what's next i begin to ask god when will we see an increase in peace or a place of calmness i clearly heard god say terrence Embrace yourself Because it's about to get even harder Especially those that are not drawn Closer to me Then God dropped James chapter number 4 Verse number 18 in my spirit Which says draw nigh to God And he will draw nigh to you Now many of us We stop at that passage of scripture But look at the latter part of that scripture It says this It said cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your heart, ye double-minded. So God says, Terrence, look at this passage of scripture and tell me, isn't this prophetic? What are the doctors saying medically? What are the medical doctors are saying? They tell us to wash our hands. So God says, if I'm telling them on the natural to wash their hands, he said, I want you to look at this thing in a spiritual realm. He said, see, this is the problem in our society today, we have people lifting up filthy hands in my church, in my presence. When they do that, this is what God says, when you lift up filthy hands in my presence, he says you're unleashing demonic spirits in the atmosphere. And this is a time in which I need the body of believers to lift up holy hands. Says the spirit of the living God, we are in a time where we need an extraordinary empowering of God's Holy Spirit like never before. So God emphatically God emphatically said Terrence I'm causing a resetting of the heart of the believers to take place. He said but many of them even though we are all on somewhat a house arrest many still won't draw near to me. Says it's been the living God. I'm calling for the seemingly abandoned and the seemingly forgotten. God says, tell them I will not abandon them in the midst of this pandemic. I just need them to come clean or stay away dirty. And as we're facing some of the most trying times in America, just on today, we saw the U.S. Capitol turned up. We saw people climbing the walls like they were Spider-Man. We saw people breaking windows, sitting in Congress and Senator's seat as if they got that seat sold up. We're seeing this happen 
on national television. And I begin to weep in my bed. I said, God, where is the reverence? And God said, Terrence, America has been wax cold. He said, they have turned their heart against me. He says, but the only answer for America in this season, he said, the only answer for America is the church. It won't come from a stimulus package. It won't come from the government. It won't come from our president. It won't come from our Senate. It won't come from our Congress. He said, if America is going to be saved, it's got to come from the righteous ones. Ooh. Oh, man. And that's why God is saying, it's going to get worse before it gets better because many going to hear this. But they're going to turn a deaf ear. And God says, what is going to take? Will it take death? What is going to take? Is it going to take my coming for you to get it? And we're facing the trying times of our life. We're even fighting inner demons. Many of you all, the spirit of anxiety and panic attacks has been increased at an all-time high. The spirit of depression has been the garment that many of y'all have been wearing, even as you're watching me right now. And it seems, look at what God is saying. I'm preaching about three of y'all right now. It seems the more many of y'all hear the word of God, the more we try to get in a place called, we need to get in a place called spiritual solidarity. It seems like the enemy is going after us like never before. The spirit of rejection has increased for many of you all. The enemy has made us feel like because our friends, our loved ones are calling us, we feel like they're showing their true colors. But in essence, let me bless you with this. But in essence, what you don't realize, and that is, it's not that they don't care. They're in survival mode themselves. Especially those that are not in God and know they should be in God. The enemy has painted a picture in their minds that where they are is okay. But what they don't realize, and that is, the further away that they get away from God, the harder it is to get back to God. Woo, my, my, my. Can I say that again? This is what God says to me. He says, what you don't realize, the further away you get from me, the harder it's going to be to get back to me. Let me say that one more time. The further away you get from me, from me, the harder it's going to be to get back to me. And the reason why that's going to happen because the enemy says, now that I got you on my side, and because I got you on my side, I'm going to make sure that I strap you with seven more demons even greater than the demons that you were fighting before you left my presence. <laughs> Simply because, let me bless you with this. Simply because the enemy, let me show you something about this enemy. The enemy has placed a I'll never let you go trap on many of our lives. Which says the next time you get free is when the enemy has finished his assignment for your life, which is ultimately your death, right? So what does the enemy do? He now causes you to look at God differently. Many of y'all, you don't look at God the way that you used to look at him. You just think that God is ain't real. You just think that God is a God of... He gonna, he gonna, he gonna, he gonna, he gonna rub your shoulder, you gonna rub his back, and you gonna get your answers. But what you don't realize is that the Bible says in the book of Psalms that he's a terrible God. But God says, but tell my people, Terrence, even in my terribleness, I won't leave my people. I just need my people to return back to me. He said, I just need my people to return back to me. So what does the enemy do? This is what the enemy is doing. He said, and because you're facing hardships <laughs> and you're facing disappointments, you're left wondering, what does God think ever real? I know many of you all are saying, is God really real? If God was really real, why is he allowing so much 
death to happen. If God is really real, why is he allowing so much of this COVID to happen? And there's a second string of COVID. You have to remember. Let me walk around here. I ain't scared of none of you Negroes here. You have to remember. God says, before I unleash my, my, my wrath, he says, I came to the church and I told my church, especially Amos 3 and 7. He says, I do nothing unless I reveal it to my prophets, the servants first. So God says, I, 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 don't, I don't never want my people to be caught by surprise. He says, I, I told my, my prophets to warn y'all that judgment is about to hit. But many of y'all, you ignored what I was saying. But God says, now that you tied my hands with your rebellion. Now you tied my hands with your rejection. He says, now you get what you get because you ignored the voice of God. Hello, Noah. When Noah told the people it was about to rain, they ignored Noah. But I hear God saying, don't ignore me this time. So God says, look what God said. He says, he says, he said, yes, I know we're facing a global pandemic, a global pandemic epidemic now add on that look what's happened we're fighting corona we're fighting financial strain now we had another demon that's been added on look at the third demon that's been added on now we're fighting a racially divided country so three things that are happening that we're facing we're facing a financial crisis we're facing a disease that they can't seem to get a hold of and now we're facing a racially divided country. What did Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse number 12 say? He said a threefold cord is not easily broken. So what does the enemy do? Uncle Tom, let me walk around in here. So what do you mean? In a sense, what I'll do, I'll make sure that I put a three-strand cord to choke the very life out of you. So we, So you cannot... <laughs> so that you cannot feel the relief of the Lord. He said, so I'll make sure that your finances are hurt. And especially if you're not a tithe, he said, I'm going to make sure that you suffer. And then he says, now i put a disease on you that you can't get free from. And now, the next thing that's happening, now we got a racially divided country that God's told me and says, Terrence, tell my people that it's about to get worse. We're about to almost experience World War III because everybody got a gun and everybody can now justify their amendment, amendment right, right? So I found myself trying to go, go to God against what he's showing me, right? Come on, y'all. I'm going to God. I'm pleading with God. I'm saying, God, don't show me this if you don't give me a solution because I understand that when God begin to show me things and his word says, that when the righteous, he said that he said when the righteous cry, he said we can counterattack the attack. But God spoke to me as I was trying to counterattack the attack. God spoke to me. It said, Terrence, in most cases, it is it is I who is in control. And sometimes, even when the righteous cry, he says, I'm, I'm still in full control, even if you don't look like I'm in control. Let me say that again. He said, even when it don't look like I'm in control, he says, I'm still in fully control. So as a byproduct of me praying for order, it seems as if the spirit of chaos has hit at an all-time high. We ain't never seen these days before. The Great Depression ain't never seen these days before. 1920 have never seen what's getting ready to hit America. And God says, I, I tried to get America to be in a place called repentance, right? He says, we are, without a doubt, facing a global chaos and confusion on every side in this season. But God reminded me and said, Terrence, we can't focus on what's going on. He says, tell them, but don't allow the spirit of fear to be the garment that many of them put on. Said the spirit of the living God. He said, we must fix our eyes on the Father. And the promises found in his word that he will work all things for our good, for those who love him and have been called according to his purpose. I need about eight people, please, y'all. Do me one huge favor. Eight people, please just type in, I will draw nigh to you, God. Come on. 
Just type in, I will draw nigh to you, God. Come on. Hurry up, y'all. We ain't got our day. Oh, my. Rosandre Katamandro. Mandana Manche. Rusiande de Bancho Kotabache. Rosande Karaba. Come on, give me 10 minutes, y'all. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. I'm going to try to walk this dog in 10 minutes, y'all. Hurry up. Come on, just type in, I will draw nigh to you, God. Come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Uma se riande de da banche, come on, riande kata banche. Come on, come on, come on. If y'all can give me 15 minutes, just type in, go keep preaching, Pastor T. Come on. If I can get about seven people just to tell me to keep preaching, I'll be all right. If I can just see seven people just tell me to keep teaching, I'll keep teaching. Seven people just tell me to keep teaching, and I'll keep teaching. I just need a good 15 more minutes. Oh man, so ramane here under Katabanshi. I just need seven people. Just tell me I will draw nigh to you. Come on, come on, come on. There you go, daughter. Just type in God, I'll draw nigh to you. Come on, come on, come on. I just need seven people to just tell me to keep preaching. Because I'm getting ready to go somewhere, y'all. Y'all don't want to miss this part. So look at this. Come on, I need y'all to, to hear this. So look what God tells me. He's, so while I was in prayer, I watched the news for a moment. And I saw a major spirit of eruption that hit our world. And God says, that's the natural side of things. He says, but what if I flip the script and cause that same eruption to hit in the spirit realm? The Lord said to me, Terrence, what the world needs is an experience of my glory. <laughs> he said, Terrence, what the world needs is an experience of my glory. He said, what the world needs is an experience of my glory. He said, what the world needs is an experience of my glory. Oh my. He said, what the world needs is an experience of my glory. Oh man. Says the spirit of the living God What's about to hit the days and the weeks to come He said I'm about to erupt this nation with my glory He said but it's going to start in your personal home And then it's going to spill over in your communities He says if America is going to be saved He said it got to start in your home Says the spirit of the living God but this next wave, somebody said this next wave, this next wave that's about to hit America, only the strongest going to survive. God said, Terrence, what's about to cause this nation to change? The body of believers must change first. Change will always start with the believer first. Then he says, what happened in Exodus chapter number 33? Can I teach for 10 minutes? I need to teach for the next 10 minutes, y'all. Let me teach for the next 10 minutes. Can I teach for the next 10 minutes, y'all? Don't log off yet, y'all. Please, y'all, don't log off. Whatever you do, don't log off. Whatever you do. Exodus chapter number 33. Hurry up, y'all. Look at this. It was in Exodus chapter number 33. It's where an unlocking that took place for Moses and the people of God. Eight people that want the same unlocking, just type in, unlock it, God. Come on. Eight people, just type in, unlock it, God. Come on. The people that want this unlocking, just type in, unlock it, God. Says the Spirit of the living God, I've given you keys that will unlock the doors and set multitudes free. But I need the people to draw near to me like the people did in Exodus chapter number 33. Come on, I'm telling y'all, we about to experience an Exodus chapter number 33 experience right around here. So here it is. You have, don't log off. Whatever y'all do, you're going to miss it. You're going to miss it if you log off. So here it is. In Exodus chapter number 33, the story is about Moses leading God's people from Egypt to the promised land. Prophetically speaking, Egypt means bondage. So look at what it says in verse number one. It said that the Lord said to Moses, leave this place. The Lord tells Moses,
Moses. If you're going to experience my glory, you got to depart from where you are. And this is where many of you all are right now. You're afraid to go deeper in God because you're afraid that you're going to miss out on something. But God gave Moses prophetic utterance. He said, Moses, if you're going to experience my glory, I'm getting ready to show you that where you are, the Egyptians are keeping you hostage. <laughs> he said, leave this place. You and the people that brought up out of Egypt. Look at this now. He says, go to the land I promised and owe to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. There's three dimensions. There's three generations. Isaac, I mean Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Three dimensions, right? So look at what God says. He says, I made a covenant with Isaac, Abraham, and Jacob. He said, I made a covenant with them, right? He says, in Numbers chapter number 23, verse number 19, he says, God is not a man that he shall lie, neither the son of man that he shall repent. So God said, I swore by my own self. He said, so because I made this covenant, I got to be a man of my word. And especially with my chosen people, the Israelites, right? So look what he says. He says, he says, he says, I made a promise on the altar, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob saying, I will give it to your descendants. <laughs> Woo! He says, I will give it to your descendants. And let me bless about eight of you all right here. Because we are the seed of Abraham. And because we are in the lineage, because we are a joint heir of Jesus Christ, and Jesus in the lineage of Abraham, that means, oh, Rabbi, say, come on, come on. That means anything that Jesus got access to, I got it too. So that means that when God swore, made an oath, made a covenant to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he said that same covenant applied to you, T-Bone. <laughs> he said that same covenant applies to you, Crystal. He said that same covenant applies to you, Larice. He said that same covenant applies to you, Pastor Sabrina. You, Tasha. You, Paula. You, Ladon. So you mean to tell me? You mean to tell me? That the reason why I'm going through some things that I'm going through is because I'm trying to hang on to Negroes that's not attached to my destiny. So you mean to tell me the reason why I can't experience the overflow of the Lord is because I won't depart. I won't separate myself. Look what he says. Yeah, you know what? This makes me. Uh, okay. Maybe this message is too much for y'all. This is too much for y'all. Okay. All right, I'll come back tomorrow. Let me come back tomorrow. Y'all ain't ready for this. Y'all ain't ready for this. Y'all ain't ready for this. You ain't ready for this. Y'all ain't ready for this. You ain't ready for this. Y'all, you want me to keep going? Because, man, I'm telling you, I'm getting ready to bless your socks off, y'all. Y'all want some more of this? You want some more of this? Y'all want some more of this? Look what he tells them. If I get about five more people telling me to keep going, I keep going. That just be five people say, keep going, Pastor T. Y'all got three minutes. Y'all got three minutes. I mean, you got three, you got you got 15 seconds. I need three people to tell me, keep going. All right, here we go. So look what he says. He says, verse number two. He says, I will send an angel before you and drive out the Canaanites, the Amorites, the Hittites, the Parasites, the Hivites, the Jebusites, the Jebusites. 
what is God saying? When you learn how to separate yourself from people that's not on the same page as you, he says, I'm going to drive those Negroes out of your life. He said, but the reason why I can't drive them out, the reason why I can't drive dead out, the reason why I can't drive uh, 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 sickness out is because you're surrounded around people that want to see you suffering. You're surrounded around people that's getting glory out of your suffering. But you're keeping them close proximity to you. They're enjoying your suffering. But what you don't understand is that God says, you won't experience who I really am until you start understanding that the people that are connected to you don't want to see you prosper. You trying to keep them, you, you trying to keep giving them a stimulus package, you keep bailing them out, but you, what you don't realize is that is you're sowing on dead ground. So look what God says in verse number three. He says, go up to the land that's flowing with milk and honey. But I would not go with you because you are stiff-necked people and I might destroy you on the way. Look what God says. He says, verse number three, he says, go up to the land. So God says, I'm getting ready to show you what you can have. <laughs> God says, I'm getting ready to show you what you can have. He says, but I ain't going to go with you. I'm going to show you. So in other words, God says, I'm going to play pick a boo. I'm going to play high go see. I'm going to show you a land that's flowing with milk and honey. He says, but I will not go with you because you're stiff-necked, which means you're stubborn. You're rebellious. You won't submit. You won't commit. And that's the reason why your life is in a pandemic. That's the reason why your life is in a place called topsy-turvy because God says, I'm trying to show you your next, but you won't obey. He says, as a matter of fact, not only... Not only are you stiff-necked, God says, on your way, I may just even kill you because you stink in my presence. So look at this in verse number four. He said, when the people heard of these distressing words, they began to mourn. And no one put on any ointments. For the word, for the Lord said to Moses, tell the Israelites, you are a stiff-necked people. This is what God told me to tell y'all. This is where it didn't feel good for me to tell y'all this. He said, Terrence, I've called about five people on this live right here. I've called them to be millionaires. He says, many of them are working a job that they don't even like. He said, many of them, he said, there are about two entrepreneurs that are watching me right now. And your business should be so much further along. He said, but the reason why your business came prosper is because you are stiff necked. You won't surrender. You won't commit. You won't submit, you won't obey, you won't pray, you won't fast, you won't give, you won't tithe, you won't do any of those things, and then you want me to bless you. God said, you stink so much in my presence, I don't even think I want to protect you. That's what he tells the Israelites. Look what God tells them. He says, verse number four, he says, when the people heard of these distressing words, they begin to mourn, and no one put on any ointments. For the people, for the Lord said to Moses, tell the Israelites, you are a stiff-necked people. If I were to go with you even for a moment, God says, I might destroy you. Now take off your ointments and I will decide what to do with you. So God says, I don't know what to do with you because you won't submit. You won't commit. I've given you a million dollar idea, but you're hanging around dollar people. <laughs> Let me say that again. He says, I've given you a million dollar idea. But you're hanging around dollar and chichi chain kind of people. He said, I've given you a million dollar idea, but you're hanging around loose change people. You're hanging around dollar people. He says, but I can't bless you because of your surroundings. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Look what he says, look what he says. All right, I got to finish this tomorrow. I got to finish this tomorrow. Look what he says. He said, he says, when the people heard of these distressing words, look what he says. He says, he said, I might destroy you. He said, take off your ointments. And I would decide what to do with you. So the Israelites stripped out their ornaments at Mount Horeb. Look at this now. Look at verse number seven. Now God is about to have a meeting with his people. And this is where God says, I'm about to have a meeting with my people that are listening to me right now. Here's the meeting that God is having with you and I. 
Here's the beat, y'all. I need y'all to come in to this beat. Come on in. Come on in the room. Hey, come on in the room. <laughs> Jesus is my captain, and he write all, all my prescription in the room. So come on in this room. Look what he says. He says, now Moses used a tent, right? And he pissed it outside the camp some distance away. Call it a tent of meeting. So they had a place called the tent of meeting. Look at this now. Anyone inquiring of the Lord would go to the tent of meeting outside the camp. Verse number eight. And whenever Moses went out to the tent, all the people rose and stood at the entrance to their tents, watching Moses until he entered the tent. Look at verse number nine. As Moses went, I need about eight people just to type in went. As Moses went. So what in other words, what God said, as you walk in obedience, I'm getting ready to place my approval on your stuff. All right, let me say that again. As they went, as they went, God said, I'm getting ready to place my approval as you go. He says, but I can't place my approval until you first separate yourself. Until you have this encounter with me That I'm God And I don't need a cosigner I don't need your approval I just need your obedience So look what he says Look at this Let me hurry up I'm past my time Good Lord Look at this now. So look at what he says Verse number 9 As Moses went into the tent The pillar of cloud Will come down And stay at the entrance It will stay at the entrance Right? It will stay at the entrance while the Lord spoke with Moses. Verse number 10. Whenever the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the entrance to the tent, they all stood and worshiped. Look what God said. He says, Terrence, tell this to our people. If they going to get back to the place of solidarity, if they going to get back to the place of, of experiencing the best life, he said, it's their worship. It's what I'm after. He said, it's their worship. It's what I'm after. He says, it's their worship. It's what I'm after. Oh he said, it's their worship. It's what I'm after. He says, I'm not after your money. I'm not after your house. I'm not after your car. He says, I'm after your worship. He said, your worship has the ability to shift some things that your credit can't get you. Your worship has the ability to get you to a place that your money can't get you. Your worship has the ability to cause unclogged years of portals to unlock. He says, I'm after your worship. God said, tell this to our people. I'm closing the book because I can't finish. He said, tell he said many of them stop worshiping me they forgot that I'm God he says to me it's your worship oh my come on come on come on right where you are lift your hands right where you are lift your hands right where you are lift your hands and begin to worship him come on even right where you are right where you are lift your hands come on Right where you are, lift your hands and begin to worship Him. Lift your hands right where you are, begin to worship Him. Come on, lift your hands and begin to worship Him. Come on, lift your hands. God says, I'm after your worship. I don't care. Where you are. God says I'm after your worship. For your miraculous power. God said, give me worship for the next two minutes. And so God, we bless you. Right where you are, give him worship. Lift your hands and begin to worship him. Right in the privacy of your home. If you're driving, pull over and give God worship. Bless you, Lord. God says I'm after your worship God says I'm after your worship 
We give you glory. We give you glory. Come on, give him glory. We give you glory, God. We give you back your worship right where we are. We build an altar. We want to experience your glory. We want to experience your glory. Come in the room. Come in our homes. Come on right where you are. Begin to give them glory. We don't want you just to show us, God. We want access. We want access. We want access. We don't want to see the land flow with milk and honey. We want access. the weight of your glory we want the weight of your glory we want the weight of your glory we want to feel the tangibilities of your presence we want to feel the tangibilities of your presence we want to feel the tangibilities of your presence Woo. Woo. Nah, nah, nah. Come on, right where you are, begin to worship him. You don't need a building to worship God. watching me right now. Don't log off, y'all, whatever you do. There's somebody that's watching me right now. You need to surrender your life to God right now. You need to surrender your life to God right now. There's somebody that's watching me say, well, I want to surrender my life to God. If that's you, just type in the comment section, I want to surrender my life to Christ. You ain't got to wait till the building. 
right where you are, just type in, I want to surrender my life to God right now, right where you are. Just type in, I want to surrender my life to God. Come on, surrender your life to God right now. This is the best decision you can ever make. Come on, right now. The day you hear my voice hot and out your heart, surrender your life to God right now. Just type in the comment section, I want to surrender my life to God. And then you, there's somebody saying, I'm already saved. I want to be a part of this ministry. That's you. Come on. Come on, that's you. Come on. Come on. Come on. Right now. Oh, my. Come on, you want to surrender your life to God? Come on. Come on. Come on. Right now. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Don't wait. Don't wait. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. We ain't got all day. Come on. You know I'm talking to you. Come on. Even those of you that are watching the replay, I'm talking to you. Come on. Just type in the comment section. I want to surrender my life to God. Rosandro Korama Mama Mashikoma. Let me say this. Let me say this. The anointing of God is so strong. I feel God so strong. There's so much more to this message I couldn't even finish. I couldn't finish. Right now, if you believe that this message was for you, you if you believe this message for you, and I know it was for you, I need for you right now to get a prophetic seed right now. I need you right now to get a prophetic seed. Come on. I prophesy now that the seed that you get ready to sow right now is get ready to unlock another realm of worship in your life. If God is telling you to sow a hundred, a thousand, sow it. Whatever you do, come here. We got to learn to stop giving God chump change. Come on. This is fertile ground. Thank you. This is fertile ground. I'm, I triple dog dare you. I ain't talking about your tithes. You tithes. I know some of y'all got that stimulus check. You tithe on that as well. But I'm telling you right now, sow right now. This is good ground. I'm hearing God say, sow right now. What the seed that you sow today is going to unlock everything for the rest of this year. I just heard God say, the seed that you sow today is going to unlock the unclocked portals for the rest of this year. What you do today, what you do the first month of this year determines how the rest of your year is going to, is going to, how it's going to pan out. I dare you right now to sow right now. Come on. I dare you right now to sow right now. Come on, I need you to sow right now. I'm not talking about what you did on Sunday. I'm talking about right now. I dare you to sow. To give your tithes and offering, you sow there. Come on, I dare you to sow right now. Yes, God. 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 Come on, hurry up. We ain't got all day. I dare you to sow right now. Believe the Lord God is prophet and you're going to prosper. I'm telling y'all, there's something about tonight's anointing. I felt the anointing of God. I felt the anointing of God so strong on this line. I couldn't finish. Come on, I dare you to sow right now. God, we give you praise. Come on, y'all. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. We got a few more minutes. Come on, we got a few more minutes. God, we praise you. We adore you, God. We give you glory. We give you access, God. Because we want access. Because we want access, God. We will depart. What's keeping us from getting to that next place in God? We surrender all. Come on. We surrender all. Come on. Come on, one more minute. I dare you to type in God, we surrender all. I dare you to type in God, we surrender all. Come on, hurry up. Surrender all. Hey, 
I pray this message blessed you. I'm telling you, if America gonna survive, we gotta get to another place in God. If we're gonna survive, God says, I need all of you. God says, I need all of you. Not three fourths, not a half. God says, I need all of you. But the Bible says, and I'll finish this probably tomorrow or Friday. The Bible says, in verse in that same passage of scripture, Moses asked God to show me your glory. But before God can show Moses his glory, there were some things that Moses had to do. He first had to depart. He had to first leave some people alone. Then he had to also get into a place called worship. He had to first then he had to repent. After first thing he had to leave some people. Next thing he had to do, he had to repent. See, again, many of us, we want to come into the presence of God the way that we are. But God says, there must be another level. There must be another ram in me. You can no longer operate the way that you've been operating and think that you're going to gain access. God said, no, no, no. It won't happen. With your hands lifted, it must be clean. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Brenna. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. God's doing a new thing. Faith War Family Worship Center, we in for a great time. Are we ready? God says, it starts with our repentance. It starts with our for us removing some things, separating ourselves. Amen? I'm out of here, y'all. Be blessed. I'll come back because I need to talk about the glory. I didn't even get to the glory. I didn't even get to the glory. I, I didn't get to the glory. I dare you all. I dare you all. Those of y'all that know you need to tithe, I dare you to tithe. Come on, don't play God cheap. You know you need to tithe. Tithe. You'll, you'll, you'll see the, the seed that, you, that I asked for cannot be your tithe. Amen. I love y'all. You be blessed. You be blessed. Amen. It's time for us to go deeper. We're going there, y'all. Amen. I'm out of here.